Hey Aliopa, you're watching Say It In Swedish and today we're gonna take a look at a few words that most Swedes, at least at one point in their lives, have pronounced wrong. This first word is kinda logical in a sense. The word is hamburgare and I guess you can guess what that means. But I think most kids at least, most children pronounce this as hamburgare. Hand burger, and it kind of makes sense, doesn't it? Because you hold it in your hand. It's one of the few dishes in Sweden that you eat with your hands, and children they like to eat with their hands. So I guess that's why they kind of, I guess they connect the hamburger with eating with their hands. So they would call it a uh, hand burger, and this. This is this is a very funny uh, way of pronouncing uh, hamburgare, but I I think this is this one is pretty logical. Then we have egentligen, which means uh, actually in uh, English, and a lot I I guess a lot of children, but also some adults maybe might pronounce this like egentligen. And uh, right now I cannot tell you if I Yanklian. Uh, it could maybe slip out. Yeah, uh, I'm. Sometimes I also might pronounce this like Yanklian, but it sounds a bit childish. The actual pronunciation is a Yankli. Men sluta. <laughs> the actual pronunciation is a Yentligen and not Yankligen. And this word is a real classic. Detective, which doesn't mean detective, but more like investigator, like a, a private investigator would be privat detective. So, detective. But a lot of people, uh, for most kids, would say detective. I guess it's a bit of a tongue twister for some people to say detective. So, the K gets kind of doubled and you know the the sound gets repeated. So if you say detective, then it's hard to say det at first. So people want to say detective, detective, detective. <laughs> but the the actual pronunciation here is detective, detective, detective. Right. And this one is a word that I also pronounce wrong uh, at times. It's like one of those 50-50 words I would say. I pronounce this correctly half of the times and half of the times I'm being lazy and I don't. And the word is interview. <laughs> I cannot even do it. The actual word is interview. Interview. And the hard part here is the view, and a lot of people pronounce this like interview, because it's just easier to say. Interview is hard, interview is a lot easier for uh, Swedes. I would say that this is due to that the Swedish R and J are very close to one another. R Y, y, not J or something, but Y, so we have R, y, very close uh, in uh, to make those sounds or very easy to transition between those sounds and even in some dialects or when people uh, ha are having trouble pronouncing the R, um, sometimes uh, they say Y instead. So this is probably why this pronunciation, this mispronunciation exists because it's just easier to say um, instead of going interview. It's just easier for us to go from R to J, then R to V, and then to J uh, again, which is closer to R. Um, so that's it basically. And this pronunciation is kind of funny to me. Uh, the word is citationstecken, which means quotation mark. And a lot of people, a lot of Swedes, not only children, whereas I don't think children even knows what uh, this is, um, they say citationstecken, which would mean situation mark instead. Um, and I get it. 
the words are kind of close, sitahun and sitwahun. They are almost, the, almost, they almost sound the same, but they don't mean the same. Sitahun is a quotation, and sitwahun is situation. So, uh, not. You should not pronounce this word as situations taken, but this is a very common mispronunciation, and I think it sounds kind of it sounds kind of cute because it's almost the same, but it's not. Then we have the biggest mispronunciation of all times. The word is dator, which means computer in Swedish, and a lot of people like I mean a lot. R really a lot. They say data, data spel, for instance, for computer games or video games, instead of dator spel. Um, so it's sometimes not easy even for uh, people that don't say data for dator to know if the compound uh, is is supposed to be with data or if it's supposed to be with dator because a lot of people they just say this wrong and it's not that we normally yeah normally they would spell it wrong as well uh, so it's this is a tricky thing is a tricky thing but data is you know data it's information it's what a doctor manages right so uh, this is it's, I don't think it's good to mispronounce this or uh, to mix these words up because um, data already has a meaning that we need to, to use and the data is something else entirely uh, but that processes data 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 whatever so um, don't say uh, don't say data when you mean data but most people will and I'm I will too because it's just it's it's just such a common thing to do but more more importantly don't don't um, mix uh, these two words up in writing. That's the most important part uh, for you to to learn here. Then we have what means tone, which means at least, and a lot of people would uh, pronounce this as what means tonde with a d uh, there at the end before the e and the ending e. It's a very very common mispronunciation and thus also a very common this mic. <sighs> I hate this mic. I don't know. I don't have a good explanation for this pronunciation, but uh, the important thing here is as you might hear this and you even might see this if uh, people aren't confident uh, in how to spell the word. So remember that what means stone is the word, not without the D. What means stone means nothing. There's no word. Uh, it, yeah, it doesn't mean anything. Maybe it comes from that we have the word stond, uh, which means stand, for instance. So what means stond? Eh, it, maybe that's why this uh, pronunciation exists. And all of a sudden, it turned dark, so thank you, weather. I will have a blast in post to, you know, fix this. <laughs> then we've got the word omständli, which kind of means cumbersome, but a lot of people would say omständig without the L there, omständi. So omständli is the word, and people would say omständi. Or omstendig, if you're, you're that kind of person. Probably uh, people mix this up with omstendighet, uh, which means circumstance. So, omstendli is something else. Uh, this means cumbersome, and omstendi in this form doesn't mean anything. And before someone tries to correct me, omstendi in Swedish is a dead word, so uh, when I say it doesn't exist, it's not used at all uh, today, I, I would say it's in the very, very old dictionaries. So just as a safety net, don't try to correct me in the comments, I know this, word's, this word existed, but... no. Then we have anledning in Swedish, and in English this means reason, and um, 
quite a few people would say and ledning and i think the reason for this is that we have words like and spirit or and even which means duck or we have andas which means to breathe so um, this is probably the reason for this uh, weird mispronunciation but there is no d in anledning well there is a d but not that d in the beginning don't uh, say that. It's anledning, not andledning. And the last word for today is something that 99.9999999 verdammt 9 percent would, <laughs> would get wrong uh, at least when spoken. And this uh, word is, or well, it's kind of two words. The one is a long form and the one is a short form and they have been merged into a wrong form. We have till des and tills. Both means until. So we have till, which means to and des, which means um, it's to it's. It's just old grammar till wanted the possessive case back in the day uh, and so forth these two words got contracted into tils well just contracted so like this <laughs> and this new expression tils des the two words merged into one and this is wrong but a lot of people are maybe yeah almost everyone uh, are they are all the cool kids are doing it but you should definitely not use this in writing because it's not good. But you can say what you want. That's my philosophy. Say what you want, but in writing, please use the... Please obey the rules. <laughs> Alright guys, if you want to learn more, stop by SailingSwedish.com for free audio lessons and join our Discord server to chat with me and other fans and learners. And if you want to support this project, you can do that on Patreon, all the links are in the description down below, and we will see each other in another video. Hey, though.